In this video, I wanna talk about resonance versus the inductive effect, but let's compare this acid with this acid. Which of these two acids is a stronger acid? Well, we, to determine that, we need to look at their respective conjugate bases, and we need to see which one is a more stable conjugate base. And I'd like you to know right now, this is a more stable conjugate base than this one. So because this is a more stable conjugate base, we know, therefore, this is a stronger acid. But why was this a more stable conjugate base and therefore making this a better acid? Well, we know when these two compounds, when they act as acids, they happen to get negative charges. So now they're stuck with this negative charge. However, this compound, once it gets this negative charge, that formal charge of negative one, all that negative charge electron density is localized and stuck on this oxygen. So we have that localized high charge density negative charge on this oxygen. So we have this high charge density on this oxygen. However, with this conjugate base, we know it also gets that formal charge of negative one. However, this conjugate base has resonance. We have resonance structures, where again, we, we would go down pushing these electrons here and then pushing these electrons here. So again, we have resonance structures. And when we have that resonance structures, we delocalize that negative charge rather than this negative charge all being localized on this oxygen with that high charge density, which is again, very unstable. Instead, we can take that negative charge and delocalize it throughout this entire atom, this entire compound. So now that negative charge is delocalized over this entire atom. And again, this is stable. We know nature hates strong localized charge density. We know that's not stable. So that's why this is more stable, can delocalize that negative charge over a larger region. So again, this is resonance. Resonance is when we delocalize the negative charge through these pi bonds, through this pi bond system. Because again, we know we have all these pi bonds. We know we have all these pi bonds with these electrons in these pi bonds, and we're, go we're going through that resonance. So that's what resonance is, when we delocalize negative charge through a pi bond system. So now let's compare this acid with this acid. Which of these two acids is stronger? Well, the same thing. Look at their conjugate bases. Which is a more stable conjugate base? And I'll let you know this is a more stable conjugate base than this one. So if this is a more stable conjugate base, we know this is a stronger acid. But why? Because of the inductive effect. So what's the inductive effect? Let's look at these two conjugate bases. So again, this conjugate base, it's stuck with that negative charge localized on this oxygen. That high negative electron dense negative charge density localized on that oxygen, which is unstable. However, this guy, yeah, it also has that negative charge density localized on this oxygen, but also it has these very electronegative fluorine atoms. And we know these fluorine atoms are very electronegative, so they very strongly pull electron density. They're very strongly pulling some of this negative charge electron density towards these fluorine atoms. And they do this through the inductive effect. So the inductive effect is when we pull electron density or charge density through sigma bonds, through the sigma bond system. So that's the inductive effect. So the inductive effect occurs when we have some kind of charge and then we have these very electronegative atoms pulling that charge through this inductive effect, through, through these sigma bonds, through these sigma bonds, through the sigma bond system. So again, this is also delocalizing that negative charge, somewhat delocalizing that negative charge. It's not quite as good as resonance. Resonance fully delocalizes that negative charge through these pi bond systems. Well, the inductive effect just kind of somewhat, somewhat weakly pulls electron density, but because fluorine is very electronegative, it's, it's pretty, it's pulling some, a decent amount of electron density through these sigma bonds. <clears throat> And the closer the fluorine are, the, the more electron density they can pull away. If these fluorines were actually, instead of the fluorines being here, there the fluorines were here, the inductive effect would be weaker and they wouldn't be able to pull electron density as much. So that's the inductive effect. It's when an electronegative atom pulls electron density through these sigma bonds, through the sigma bond system. So now I wanna do another example to really illustrate this point. Oh, that was the wrong one. So let's look at these four acids. So these were originally acids. And we wanna determine the strength of these acids. How? We look at their conjugate bases and we see which one, which of these four conjugate bases is most stable. So first let's compare this one with this one. Well, like you know, this is more stable. This is a more stable conjugate base. Why? Because it has a lot of resonance. We know these electrons can fall down, pushing these electrons here, pushing these electrons here, and pushing these electrons here. However, there are more resonance structures. Once we push those electrons down and those electrons go here, now these pi bonds, these pi electrons can now go here. And once they go here, then these electrons can go on this oxygen. 
And the same thing, this has resonance. So now, and then again, they also have that original resonance. And then those electrons can go back, pushing these electrons back, and then pushing these electrons here and those electrons here. So we know this is very strongly stabilized by resonance. This negative formal charge of negative one on this oxygen can be delocalized really throughout this entire atom through resonance. So that's very stable. That's very delocalized negative charge, very low charge density. That formal charge of negative one is spread out through in this entire region. So that's why this is a very stable, very stable conjugate base. How about this guy? Well, this also has resonance, the normal resonance. However, that's it. That's it. We, there's no resonance structures that include this, this functional group. Because again, if these electrons fell, put going like that, we could push these electrons here, forming that. But once we form that, we're forced to push these electrons here or, or onto this carbon. However, there's no resonance structures that can include this structure. You, you, can, you can draw resonance structures all day long. There's no possible resonance structure that can include this nitrogen. Well, there, there, there's these, like once we push these electrons here, these electrons can't go here pushing these. You can, that, that would have this carbon with five bonds and you can draw for yourself and see for yourself. So this doesn't have resonance. However, this nitrogen is an electron withdrawing group. It withdraws electron density because it's a positive charge. So there is the inductive effect. So there is some of the inductive effect through this sigma bond system. So with this example, we could pull those electron density throughout this entire system through resonance through these pi bonds, through this pi bond system. However, with this example, we can pull, we can delocalize this negative charge electron through this entire region through resonance. However, this can't delocalize with resonance, but it can delocalize with the inductive effect, which is a little weaker, so it pulls some a little of that electron density. So again, this 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 has so this has very good resonance. This has decent resonance with a little bit of the inductive effect, but with again pulling electrons through the sigma bond system, which is a difference. So now let's compare this one with this one. Well, pretty straightforward. This just has that normal resonance. So delocalizes this negative charge throughout this entire atom. Well, this one also has that resonance, but it also has a little bit of an inductive effect, delocalizing the negative charge a little more. So therefore, this is, this is a more charged, higher charge density, because again, that same formal charge is now spread out through a smaller volume. So this is a higher charge density, so this is less stable, so this is a less stable conjugate base. And this is a more stable conjugate base, because again, that formal charge of negative one is spread out through a little more, a little more. So now let's compare this guy with this guy. Well, again, they still both have resonance. They both have resonance. You can draw the resonance structures. They have the exact same resonance. So the electrons can be de this formal charge of negative one can be delocalized through this pi bond system with resonance. However, something important to note is this guy has a particular resonance structure. So, so I'm gonna draw it. It has a resonance structure that looks like this. Where again, these electrons fall down forming a double bond, so we see that double bond. Then these electrons go here, forming a bond here, so we see that. But then once these electrons go here, now these electrons, they could either go here forming this bond, or they could go here onto this carbon. And if they went here onto this carbon, we would have this carbon anion. But something important to note is this carbon anion is not stable. This is not a stable conjugate base. Why? Because we know we have this electron donating group. Remember, this was an electron with, or, or this was an electron withdrawing group. It pulled electron density because it was positive. But this is an electron donating group because again, it's an alkyl group. We know alkyl groups have those carbon hydrogen bonds with these orbitals with negatively charged electrons. So this is an we have those those negative charge electron donating properties. So we already have a negatively charged oxygen with that that negative charge density. But we don't want to donate more negative charge, making a stronger charge density, and therefore more localized charge which again we know is unstable so 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 that's a problem so this electron donating group is, is actually de destabilizes this so comparing this one with this one this is a more stable conjugate base than this one because again they're pretty similar it's just this has an electron donating group donating electron density therefore therefore making more electron density a more electron rich region a higher electron density region which we know is not stable so now we know, now we know the strength of the, this is the most stable conjugate base, this is the weakest con stable, or this is the most stable conjugate base, this is the least stable conjugate base, so therefore this is the strongest acid and this is the weakest acid. And also that also means this is the strongest base and this is the weakest base. 
So again, this is the, the strongest acid, most stable conjugate base, and therefore it's the weakest base. Because it's such a stable conjugate base, it doesn't need to act as a base taking hydrogen. hydrogen. However, this is, a very, this is the weakest acid with the least stable conjugate base, so therefore it's the strongest base. Because this is not a stable conjugate base, this isn't stable, so it really wants to get a hydrogen because it's so unstable. So that's why it's the strongest base. But again, the point is, is the difference between induct induction effect and resonance. The resonance is delocalizing that negative charge through a pi bond system, and inductive effect is delocalizing that negative charge through a sigma bond system. 